I'm like Brother Danny. I love good choir singing. I remember the first time he come and preached for us, we had Brother Ted to bring Dutchman Creek down there that Friday night, boy. Good choir right there, too, now, amen. Good old-fashioned choir. Nothing like it. But it's time for the, it's time for the main serving, amen. Uh, listen, I know that there's a lot of people in here tonight, and that's a lot of bladders and a lot of kidneys. But you probably didn't stop for two hours coming down here. And if you was headed to Carowinds and Mama said, let's stop and pee, you'd probably get mad and back talk. So I want everybody in here to try to stay seated. Make sure your phone's off. Don't be looking at your phone. Amen. Cut it off. Amen. Whatever you need to do, this is, this is the sanctuary. Yeah. Amen. This, is, this is where uh, God's honor dwelleth. Someone said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so we want to honor the Lord. If you'll honor the Lord, the Lord will feel welcome. If you dishonor him, playing games and looking at phones and talking to each other and getting up and down, dishonoring his book that he esteems above his own name, then God's not going to feel welcome in here. There's answered prayer in here that people's been praying for for 30 and 40 years. There's people sitting in here. And God has worked it out to where somebody's nephew, somebody's granddaughter, somebody's grandson, hey, somebody's cousin is in this building tonight. Somebody's daddy that's been wayward. And some broken heart mama been praying for they sitting here and we need to realize that and honor God tonight and let the Holy Spirit of God have his way the Holy Spirit of God's a person and he's already roaming in these pews and he's knocking on hearts boy I'm telling you it'd be good to see some daddy get straightened out tonight it'd be good to it'd be good for the Lord to hear some newborn baby cry up in heaven tonight amen and so you, you honor the Lord and be respectful to the house of God. Right. And Brother Danny, you come preach to our heart, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you, preacher. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. Thank you, all church. Uh, it's been good to be here this week. Praise the Lord. Been good, hasn't it? Yeah, Thank the Lord. Uh, got, got saved the other night and all the ones that's got their heart right with the Lord. And uh, I'm honored to be here tonight. I do want to invite all of y'all up to our camp meeting. That's October the 18th to the 22nd. And uh, we're looking for a big time. You can come and stay. I think uh, we've got a free place to stay for all, all the, the, the Rockingham people. And, and we'll help you out if you want to come. Appreciate the preachers being here tonight. We've already mentioned. And then Brother Craig uh, Seaford tonight. Nolan. Appreciate y'all preachers being here tonight. Uh, there a lot of places they could be tonight, let me tell you. Yeah. But they chose to be here with us, and I appreciate it. And I thank you for coming. Maybe you're here tonight because you got threatened, blackmailed, uh, uh, hog tied, uh, tricked, whatever. Maybe you're here tonight. I'll try not to t uh, take advantage of you, but I do want you to listen to what I've got to say. It's very, very important that you hear the next few minutes. Amen. I'm glad for uh, Brother Randy driving that bus down here and bringing all of our folks. Appreciate all our folks from Shining Light. Uh, two of our deacons are here tonight, Brother Jeff and, and uh, Brother Steve, and then. Uh, my, some of my family, uh, Todd and Carrie are here. Dax is over tonight. Glad he got to come. Uh, he don't get to be with us a whole lot because he's always gone off a loafer somewhere. Uh, but uh, we're glad he's here tonight. And all of them, all, wherever you're from, we really, really appreciate you being here. And I, hey, like, uh, I thank God for South Ridge Baptist Church Amen. and what you're doing. Yeah. And you're doing it the right way. Somebody said you can't build a church like that no more. That, that's the only way to build one. Yeah. Preaching and praying. Amen. Preaching and praying. Preaching and praying. Now take your Bible tonight. Turn to the book of Philippians chapter number four. The book of Philippians chapter number four. Everybody, please. Somebody beside you does not have a Bible. You might want to share your copy of God's word with them tonight. Uh, they can look and see what I'm reading. The Apostle Paul written to the church of Philippi and he closes it out by making a statement here tonight that I want to use in the message tonight. Philippians chapter number four, 
verse number 11. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, that don't include California, therefore with to be content. Amen. Wasn't no California when he said that. Or he wouldn't have said it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, look at the middle of that verse. For I have learned. See that? Yeah. I have learned. You're going through life, you learn some things. Amen. Some things you learn the easy way. Some things you learn the hard way. But the actual truth is, you're going to learn some things, like it or not. Amen. You can come the easy way or you can come the hard way. Yeah. But there's some things you're going to learn. I'm preaching tonight on the subject, some things you better learn. Amen. Now, experience, they say, is the best teacher. Uh, when you learn something by experience, uh, you learn it real, real good. Yes, when you don't, sometimes just head knowledge, but when you learn something by experience, it becomes part of you and part of your character and, and your being. Now, there's some things in life that you're going to learn that we all learn through life, just normal little things as you get older. Yeah. The reason most of the time that young people are a little more wild and wicked and older people are more conservative is because the older people have had time to see the ship come back in. Yeah. And they've time to reap what they've sowed. And they've wised up. When you're young, you think you're invincible and you can just do anything that don't matter and anything, anything, anything oh, you'll, it don't worry, you can't hurt. And I, you'll, you'll, you'll learn some hard lessons as you go through life. Now, uh, somebody said you, ne you learn never to wake up your second baby just to see it smile. You let the thing sleep uh, as long as you possibly can, amen? Somebody said, uh, he who go out to set world on fire soon come back for more matches. Uh, you learn that. Uh, you're not big and bad and tough as you think you are. Uh, somebody said this, the only thing that men learn from history is that men never learn from history. Somebody said, uh, they that refuse to learn the lessons of history are condemned to repeat them. That's why every generation keeps making the same mistakes over and over. They did not learn from history. Somebody said uh, that uh, you've learned, never judge a person until you've walked a mile in their shoes. That's a good thing to learn, ain't it? Somebody said this. They said you can't sling mud without losing ground. That's a good thing to learn. Somebody said uh, you can fool some of the people some of the time and all the people every now and then, but you can't never fool God. Amen. Somebody made that great statement. A lot of great sayings like that that you learn. Like, like uh, you know, uh, uh, never play leapfrog with a unicorn. Smith and Wesson beats four aces, stuff like that. Uh, those are not in Bible, but they're good lessons that you learn as you go down through life. Now, I will talk about a little tonight about some things that you better learn. Number one, I want to say you better learn this evening that sin is deceitful. Sin is deceitful. Now you kids, you're living in a world that presents sin as normal and even healthy and okay and there's nothing that's wrong. You do whatever you want to do. It don't matter what the rule book said or what the Bible said. You just do whatever you want to. I'm going to tell you tonight, sin is deceitful. Sin's like the bait. A man's fishing and he's got the bait on a hook like that and he throws it in there. That fish, all that fish sees is that bait. That worm. So he goes toward it. He don't see the hook on the inside. That's the way your parties are. That's the way your drinking buddies are. That's the way when those guys get together and smoke a joint and have a little party on it, you see the bait. It looks like fun, see? It looks like fun. You don't see the hook on the inside of it. Get out there and go up down the street tonight. You'll see the hook. You'll see what happened. I'm going to tell you tonight, we've never had a generation of kids that needed it more to understand and learn that sin is deceitful. Sin ain't what it's cracked up to be. It'll paint you a pretty picture, but inside there's a hook. 
you see a guy out there on a, on a billboard, and he's a real nice, handsome looking young man. He's got his arm around a pretty girl. He's got a, a beer in his hand. He's sitting on the hood of a Corvette. And uh, the implication is that if you'll drink this beer, you'll get a Corvette, and you'll get a, a pretty girl. And you'll, uh, the devil never shows you the backside of that sign. Well, that guy's sitting in a rehab somewhere, and his skin just as, uh, I mean, uh, just as red as blood, and his pretty girl's gone, and his teeth gone, and his personality's gone, his job's gone, his money's gone, and everything. That's how deceitful sin is tonight. I heard Dr. Kidd say a long time ago, sorry, the message said he heard about this boy. And this boy came to revival just like we're in here tonight. And they said, uh, they told a preacher, they come up to him, and they said, now, preacher, there's going to be a young man here tonight just got out of jail. He just got out of jail. He ain't, been, he ain't been out long, but we've talked him into coming to the revival tonight, just like some of you have. And, and he said, uh, as soon as he walked in, he spotted him. He just tell. Just tell him looking at him. He said, that's the young man sitting right over here in this section. He said he got up and he preached. He preached and he preached and he preached and he preached. And during the imitation, that boy had big tears running down his face. He said he noticed a big old tear. He thought the Lord's got a hold of him. He's going to get saved tonight. He's going to get saved tonight. That boy never moved. After the service, they dismissed. He went up to him and he said, Son, I saw you crying. He said, I want you to get saved. Why don't you come up here and get saved tonight? And that boy said, Preacher, I, I, I want to. I know you're right. But he said, I want to, there's some things I've got to take care of first. And, and a lot of people say that. I'm in a situation or I'm in a, in a mess. I need to get a few things. When I get this straightened out, I'm going to come to church. You ever hear anybody say that? Might be some of y'all like that here tonight. You say, well, I just got so much going on in my life. I, when I get it all, now, now the truth is, you ain't never going to get it all worked out. That's like saying I'm on the way to get better and then go to the doctor. Uh, there wouldn't be no need to go to the doctor if you get better by yourself. And so they say, I, I will come, but not now. And the preacher said, you need to do it now. You need to do it now. And that boy looked at him and he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, preacher, I'm going to go get some things straightened out and you give me your phone number and you'll hear from me in two weeks. So the preacher wrote his phone number down on a piece of paper, gave it to him, and he said, all right, I'll see you later. He said, you'll hear from me in two weeks. Walked out the door. He said a few, few days went by and he said he, he forgot all about it. He said, I'll never, I'll never see that guy again. I'll never hear from him. And a, a little bit like 12 or 13 days later, he said, somebody knocked at the door. He said he opened the door and it was a police officer. He said, are you, uh, so, and, and so-and-so, 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 and I'm over here, I'm officer so-and-so. He said, yeah, he said, yeah, he said, uh, he said, there's been a homicide down the road here. And he said, a young man was killed in a bad, tragic shooting. And he said, we looked around, we found your name and phone number laying on that coffee table. And he said, we'll show you some pictures. And we want to know if you knew this guy or what happened or what, what connection did he have to you. He said he looked at them pictures. And there was an old, dilapidated, run-down trailer when they didn't, they didn't trailer, just all junk, weeds growed up everywhere. He said he took pictures in there and they walked in. They had beer cans stacked up. You know how they do them like a pyramid? Stacked up them empty beer cans like that in that room. He said there was filth and trash laying everywhere. And he looked there and there was a picture of that young man. He was laying on the couch and he's laying on that couch there and he had, they said he'd been shot. A friend shot him right there between his eyes. They was partying. Everybody was high. And he said he had a hole in the back of his head big enough you could about put your fist in through that hole. Blew his brains out right there on that couch. Yeah. They got the young man that shot him. They called him in, in the police station. They pulled him in there and they said, so what in the world? What in the world? Explain it. And that boy confessed. He said, man, I don't know. He said, I don't know what happened. He said, we was all high. And he said, he said I looked over there at him and it wasn't him, it was the devil. He said, I saw the devil's face. I didn't see his face. He said, that really happened pretty? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That ain't just Hollywood, people. That stuff is real. He said, I saw the devil's face and he said, I looked at him and he said, it looked like his hands was claws. And he said, I was going to kill the devil. And he said, I shot him right in the head. And then he realized that it was his buddy. You know what that boy found out? His two weeks never did come. 
and he's in hell tonight if something didn't happen in the last few moments of his life. You know what he found out? Sin is deceitful. It's not what it's cracked up to be. How many, how many girls out there tonight Tonight, while we're sitting in here in the house of God, how many young girls are out there tonight in, in, an, in an abortion clinic or maybe somewhere uh, in, in, a, in a jail cell saying, oh God, what have I done? Oh God, what have I done? And it started out at the football game when this little good looking guy started hitting on her and flirting with her and promising her this and promising her that. Next thing you know, he said, come on, take a ride with me. She gets in the car. Next thing you know, they got a beer. Next thing you know, they got a joint. Next thing you know, he swerves this way and hits somebody head on and he's charged with manslaughter and she's in jail tonight. That's what we find out that sin is deceitful. There's a lot of boys tonight. Your age, hear me? Your age young people that are in a rehab tonight that found out the hard way sin is deceitful. Amen. Sin is deceitful, buddy. Sin is deceitful. I'm telling you years ago when I was growing up uh, everybody was Great. When I was just a little kid, I mean, eight, nine years old, uh, the Beatles came to America. And when the Beatles came to America, you older folks remember it? Everything changed. Yep. I preach a lot of times, I blame half our problem on the Beatles. And people get mad at me, but it's the truth, true. Every, the whole country changed yep. when they got here. And I remember when I was growing up, everybody thought I'd give anything in the world to be like them. And we all got bands and we was beating on drums and playing guitars and everybody was in a band and everybody wanted to be the Beatles and be the Beatles. And I remember thinking, my goodness, them guys got the world by the tail. 21, 22, 23 years old, fans screaming. They had more money than they could spend. Yeah. They couldn't even get rid of it. And I remember growing up thinking, good night, wouldn't that be something to have that kind of thing? And you know, I, I noticed that you know why people want to be famous? I'm going to tell you why people want to be famous. They look at other famous people and they just admire them and they think, I want other people to look at me like I'm looking at them. Yep. Yep. It must be wonderful to be them. But the truth is, once you get there, it's a vacuum and it's empty. Listen to the movie stars. Now, if you're saved and get fame and fortune, praise God for it, enjoy it, use it for God. But a person who only works to be famous will be disappointed whether he gets there or not. Yeah. And he said, I want, I want to be famous. I want to be famous. Like that retard, crazy, nut, dojo cat woman, whoever that is. Uh, Y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, that weirdo singing about being a demon and, and dojo, uh, a marijuana leaf and cat. I'm going to name a girl after a cat. Uh, can I tell y'all something tonight? You are not a cat. You're not a cat. I hope. If you are, you're the weirdest looking cat I ever seen. But you ain't one. And uh, that, oh, you're some, uh, you're some fool like old, old, old young blood, whatever his name is. I want to say, well, you know, I'm on a low life. I'm a low. You sure are a low life, buddy. Uh, that's about as low as you can get uh, down like that. But you get on there like that, you know, and you think, uh, oh, I want to be like them. I want to be like them. I want to be like them. So you be a demon or whatever, just in order to be famous. And that's what the Beatles had. But I've lived long enough to now to see their ships come in. Right now, John Lennon. John Lennon, who, who said there was, he cursed Jesus. You know what John Lennon said about Jesus Christ? John Lennon of the Beatles said, Jesus Christ was a dirty, stinking, Catholic, Spaniard bastard. And he said that. And he said, we're more popular than the Beatles now. And everybody went, whoa, they worshiped John Lennon. But outside of that theater that night in New York City, that guy, Mark Chapman, whatever his name was, he waited on John Lennon, got his autograph. And John Lennon took that bullet through the head just like that man I was telling a while about ago. I wouldn't want to be in John Lennon's shoes right now. I would not want to be in his shoes. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be mean or hateful tonight. But I'm telling you, sin ain't what it is. Listen, there's up and she loves you, yeah, yeah. And the whole world went crazy. But then, brother, when you wake up and your eyes look up like that, and you ain't no God, and there ain't no hope, and you're there forever, you'll find out sin is deceitful. George, the lead guitar player, worship uh, uh, Krishna, Lord Krishna. 
And a lot of Christians dumb enough sing that song, sir. My sweet Lord, hire Krishna. Remember that? My sweet Lord, hire Krishna, hire, hire, hire Krishna. I ain't talking about Jesus. I ain't talking about our God. I ain't talking about uh, the false God of Krishna. Uh, they're from India, them from over there. And old George messed up the same way. He died with cancer. I hope he got saved. It don't sound good. And then Ringo wound up having to drink 16 bottles of wine every day. Ringo Starr, just in order to get by. Remember when they sing, I get high with a little help of my friends? I get high with a little help of my friends? They kept on doing it and kept on doing it. Paul McCartney's made it by God's mercy. He's 80 years old now, but the poor fella can't even eat a hamburger. Uh, the devil deceived him, and he's in a cult yep. called vegetarianism, you know. And you can't got he makes millions of dollars a year and can't eat a hamburger or in a spam or nothing. I mean, Lord, that'd be awful, wouldn't it? Uh, but I'm gonna tell you, can't eat potted meat and bainies. Lord, have mercy. Hey, he's a pauper. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something this evening, brother. They all found out sin ain't what it's cracked up to be. I would, I wouldn't trade what places tonight with either one of them beetles for all the money in this world. You hear me tonight, brother? No, sir, brother. Lenny Bias, that basketball player who was drafted by the Boston Celtics, he had all kinds of potential. He had a multi-million dollar contract play ball for the, for the Boston Celtics. And he's at a party one night and he tried some kind of crack cocaine or something or heroin or something for one time. Overdose that killed him. You know what he found out? Sin is deceitful. Sin is deceitful. And you're going to find that out too. You're going to learn it. You say, well, those are just, uh, uh, listen, there's hundreds of them like that. There's hundreds of them like that. There's Jimi Hendrix. There's Janis Joplin. Uh, there's there's uh, uh, John Bonham uh, of, uh, of uh, ACDC who wrote the song Highway to Hell and said, I'm going to no stop sign, no speed limit. Nobody going to slow me down. If over and over and over and over and over, one right after another, after another, after another, Amy Winehouse, uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, uh, Kurt Cobain, over and all, the, the, the famous 27 club, the die on the 27, over and over and over and over and over, you find out sin is deceitful. That's right, brother. And I want to say, secondly tonight, you're going to find out and you're going to learn the world is fictional. This whole world is fiction, brother. It ain't what it's cracked up, cracked up to be. Now, I've, I've been in an airplane before and flew into New York City or flew into like Los Angeles and honest to goodness, when you're flying in, it, it's a sight to behold. It really is beautiful. All them different colors of lights and them big old buildings and you think, there's Los Angeles. I've heard about it all my life. All my life. There's Hollywood. There's, there's uh, Venice Beach. There's L.A. There's uh, Miami or there's Dallas. Or that, and it's pretty, man. You flying in there, it's beautiful. See those lights at night and all of that? That's just the, that's the first part, that's the front part. You go down in there and go down in them cities and go down in them turves and go downtown where we used to go giving out tracks all the time. Go down to underground Atlanta. You don't see Atlanta by looking and seeing the big buildings. That's just a cover. You see Atlanta when you go down in the streets. And one right after another, after another, after another, these people laying on the sidewalks. And they're laying on a piece of cardboard. And laying with a little tent over them if they're, if they're lucky enough to have a tent. And the girls standing out on the street, just same as a lot of you girls, and they're bent over like this right here. You seen them? Heads way down here. I don't see how they stand up. And, and they're, they're tripping, buddy. I mean, they're, uh, they're high as a kite. And don't you know? And will do anything in the world just to get that next high. And their life is very short. Life don't last long like that. Yep. You'll see them laying there, people stepping over them. Our big cities tonight, San Francisco, San Diego, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Philadelphia. You see them streets up there in Philadelphia? That's, that's the reality of what this world really is. This world rotten, people. This world is rotten. Did you know that they're now saying that there's 185,000 Kids come across our border from Mexico into this country that's unaccounted for. And nobody knows where they are. They gave an interview. Listen to me. They gave an interview of a man who worked for Borderland Homeland Security. This man was a Christian. He come on the air. They won't put this on the news. 
They don't want you to know how bad it is. This man gave a testimony. He said, I worked at the border. He said, we checked the people as they come across the border. He said, there was a van come across the border. A man, his middle-aged man driving the van. And a little boy sitting in the back seat like he was real scared, about five or six years old. They said, something didn't feel right. And we started asking him questions. Of course, he said, I'm his uncle. We're going to here to see our relatives, trying to come across the border at a checkpoint. Now, the only reason that they come across at a checkpoint was because the walls was stopping them. Do you hear what I said? The walls was stopping him from coming. Or he'd have just jumped across and nobody never knew it. Why is the government wanting to just let everybody come across the wall? Why? It's a lot worse than you might think. They somebody, they run a background check on that fella, found out he was a registered pedophile, child molester. They grabbed him out of the van. That guy come around there, like the, just like the scene in that movie, the, uh, what you call it, that movie, Freedom, uh, Sound of Freedom, whatever, I didn't see it, but I, I saw that clip on there where they showed it on the, on the news, and that little old boy was scared to death, sitting in that van like that, and the man said, come on, son, I ain't gonna hurt you, I ain't gonna hurt you, that little boy was terrified. Can you imagine taking one of these little kids, 185,000 of them, people, 185,000 people, kids! Now, I don't know about you tonight, I'm a sorry, good for nothing sinner. There's something inside me cannot stand the thoughts of somebody being mean to a child. Somebody being mean to a kid. Listen, they bring them little girls across the border and they sell them 20 times a day to wicked, low-down men. A day for years. And the United States of America is the largest human trafficker in the world tonight. You say, I don't like you talk all negative. I'm telling you the truth about this world. This world is rotten, brother. I know there's pretty flowers on the beach and that's the outside. I'm talking about the rotten core. It's a rotten core, brother. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, they say uh, that there's 150-something thousand of them they can't even find. It is the fastest growing enterprise on planet Earth and the child trafficking agency is now making more money than the entire airline companies put together. That's how this world is. I was in Florida a year or so ago and, and me and, and, and Kelly, we went down there. I preach down there every year in Fort Myers. Sometimes I see the coast and sometimes I don't. And I got down there and got to looking and went down there one day and I saw this yellow square with look like police tape. You know that yellow look like police tape. It said do not enter, do not cross. And all it was, been sand and I thought what in the world is that? Somebody died in there or something? And, and I looked and it and it said this. It said that sea turtles had been nesting in that area in that sand. And it said that they had a list of things that long that you could be prosecuted if you harassed, if you messed with at turtles' nest. And if you touched one of them turtles' eggs, you could be in the prison of up to six months for touching a turtle's eggs that was not born. And you could be fined up to $10,000 and, and go to prison if you mutilated or harassed them sea turtles. Same government that med- said that sanctions and allows doctors to mutilate one million babies a year in this country. So I don't like what you're saying. Well, you're going to like it less than a minute. I don't know what to tell you to do. Except go find you an easy preacher and tell you whatever you want to hear and, 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 and not hear the truth. I don't know what to tell you. If, you don't, if, you don't, if that don't bother you, there's something wrong with you. The Bible, you say, well, it's not a child till it's born. I don't know who told you that. You didn't get that out of the Bible. The Bible said John the Baptist shouted when he was in his mother's womb. The Bible said God ordained Jeremiah to preach when he's still in his mother's womb. And really, it's not a choice. It is a child. When they said, well, well, it's a woman's body. She, that's true. 
You can do whatever you want to your own body, but you ain't got no right to kill that baby's body. That, that's a different person. You don't, you don't kill yourself? Go ahead. But don't kill your baby. Amen. 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 This world rotten. That's right. 4,400 today. Yep. 4,400 today. The world is fictional. Yep. It's fictional. It ain't what it's cracked up to be. And I want to say thirdly tonight, eternity is immeasurable. Eternity is immeasurable. If we realized how long eternity was, we'd never ever think about doing anything in this world again. Set your affection on things above where moth don't corrupt, thieves don't break through and steal. Get your heart right with God while you still got a chance. I heard him talk about the same message. One of them, he said, one night, they had a revival just like this right here. He said, a man walked in the back of the church and sat down, sort of dressed in dark and sort of just a weird looking sort of a guy and he had these big old thick glasses on like these wrap around black, not just tinted, black all the way around the side of his head. And he thought, what in the world? What's that guy doing here? And he said, I have to church. He said, uh, that guy come up and he said, preacher, he said, preacher kid, I want to talk to you. He said, okay. He said, he went in the office and sat down. And he said, preacher, I'm going to tell you a story. He said, if all them people out there that you're preaching to could know what I know about fire, he said, everybody in there would get saved today. Said, this is you I'm talking to, y'all. Everybody in here is going to heaven or hell right. for a long, 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 long time. And he said, that man said, he said, I'm going to tell you my story, preacher. He said, I went through a bad divorce. He said, my wife ran off and left me. And he said, I was feeling real bad and low and down and everything. He said, he said my dad, I worked out on my daddy's old farm. So me and my, my little boy, about five years old, stayed in my daddy's old farmhouse. And he said, one day, my little boy's upstairs in that old farmhouse taking a nap, and I was out in that tractor in the field and I was plowing around uh, in the garden trying to work on that field a little bit. He said, preacher, all of a sudden, something happened to that old tractor and it, it just uh, died like that and I couldn't get it started again, couldn't get it started again. And he said, I heard a cry. And he said, I heard my little boy saying, Daddy, Daddy. He said, I looked and smoke was just coming up out of the top of that old farmhouse. Yeah. He said, that thing was going up in flames. And there's my little boy, five years old, in that window screaming, Daddy, help me. He said, I jumped off of that, off of that tractor. He said, I run through those weeds. He said, I went through that barbed wire fence as fast as I could. Up there. And he, he said, I done what any man would do, preacher. He said, my little boy, he was up there burning to death. And he said, I went through there. He said, I held my head like that. And he said, when you got in there, there were so many flames and smoke even though it's my own house, I got disoriented. I couldn't tell uh, what room I was in. And I, I couldn't, I, then I was bumping into things and finally I found the steps. He said, I could feel the fire burning my arms and I could feel it and I'm doing like this. And he said, I could feel it hitting me. And he said, I, I got up them steps and I, and I run through there and I grabbed him like this. And by then there was some men down there. And, they, and he said, I held him out like that and I, and I dropped him. And they caught him and saved my little boy. And he said, right about that time, the floor fell through where I was standing. And he said, I don't know what happened. I blacked out. I went crashing down into the floor on the end of the first story. And he said, I said, I don't know what happened. Something hit me in the head. And he said, the next thing I know, I woke up and I was in the hospital. A few days later, some of them wor workers had come in there and rescued me. And he said, they took me to the hospital. He said, I woke up. And, I, and he, said, he, he said, about that time, he took them glasses off. He said, I've never seen such a grotesque, monster-looking face in my life. He said, it's horrible. He said, I've never seen such a... He said, his eyes were out where they ain't even supposed to be. They took skin and grafted off his body up here and put it all over his face trying to patch him a face back together where he'd been in that fire. And he said... 
He said, Preacher, if them people knew what I know about fire, Amen. he said, that Every one of them would get saved. And we're not talking about five, ten years, people. We're talking about forever. I didn't write the Bible. Don't get me, I didn't write that. I'm telling you what it says. And that is in the Bible. Hell is forever. Eternity is immeasurable. You're going to learn that. You can learn it the easy way, or you can learn it the hard way. There's some things you're going to learn. I want you to bow your head, close your eyes, please. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving around. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed tonight. In the stillness of this moment tonight, we've prayed for this all week, all month, actually the last few months. God's speaking to your heart. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Danny, I know that I'm saved. I know I'm saved tonight, Brother Danny, but I'm not living like I should live. I know I've been saved, but I'm not living like I should live, and I sure wish y'all would pray for me. Will you let us pray for you tonight? Please, let us pray for you. Just slip up that hand. Take it right back down. God bless you. 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 Thank you, ladies. I see your hands back there tonight. All these hands going up. The pastor's here at the front. He's got a Bible. You ain't never going to have a better time to get saved tonight, girls, than tonight, young man. You're not going to have a better time to get saved than tonight. Is there somebody here tonight say, Brother Danny, I'm, I'm not saved. I know that I'm not saved. Brother Danny, please pray for me. Would you pray for me? I don't want to go to hell. Raise your hand. Just stick it up and put it right back down. Anybody? Anybody? Slip up that hand. Take it right back down. Anybody else? Take it. Slip up that hand. Take it right back down. All right? We're going to do business with the Lord now. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pray and we're going to stand. They're going to sing. And on the very first verse of this song, the very first verse of this song, this altar's full already. Already a bunch of people up here praying. If you raised your hand here tonight, you need help from God, this is your time to come. On the very first verse, I want you to get out of your seat, walk down here, you ladies, there'll be somebody here to pray with you, you men, they boys, there's somebody here to pray with you, and let's get this thing settled. This is what we've been praying for all week, and you're here tonight, and let's do business with the Lord right now tonight. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit of God would run the devil back and out of here and off away from here and do what only the Holy Ghost can do. Bring conviction, bring conversion, save that one which is lost, touch every single heart here tonight. God, do a miracle. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. Let's stand tonight. Sing it, girls. Amen. You come on, come on, girls, right now. You raised your hand. Come on, right now, let's pray. Come on, come on, just get out of your seat right now. Amen. This is your change right now. This is your change right now. Come on, girl. Amen. Get out of your seat. Come on, young man. Come on. Come on, right now. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. You're at a crossroad tonight. If you raise your hand here tonight, if you raise your hand here tonight, get out of your seat. Come on down here tonight. Come on down here tonight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let the Lord have his way in your heart tonight. Come on, girl. Come on. Amen. Come on, young lady. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Will you come tonight? Will you come tonight? Come on, ma'am. Come on, right now. Come on. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus tonight. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Some of you girls come pray with this girl in right here. The world you yeah. See, yeah. Yeah. Come on. No question in my yeah, mind. come on. Come on right now. Come I'll on. take Jesus every time. Amen. 
tonight. Come on, girls. Come on right now. Wait Amen. Opportunity yeah, come on tonight. Come on, girls. Come on. You raise your hand. If you raise your hand, come on tonight. Let's do business with God here tonight. That's right. That's right. Let's do business with the Lord here tonight. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Glory hands of compromise could all oh, for God. wealth and fame. Oh, God, help us. Oh, God, help us tonight. To you, you need to come, ma'am. You need to come. Come on. Jesus come on. Name. Let's get out of your seat and come right now. Oh, I'd rather be Amen. a poor man That's right. have a I had two. In the truth. Any day of the week, I'll so take Jesus. without a second thought, Amen. Woo. let me tell you what I yeah, come on now, come on, say it, come on. I'll come take now. Jesus. Come on, ma'am, come on. I'll Step take out of your seat, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, come on, right now. I'll come take on. Jesus. Come on, right now. Every time. He means he more to me. Means more come on, young man. Come on, girls, come on, let's go. And the yeah, world you see. My mind. Yeah, I'll take Jesus every time. Come on now, sing. I'll take Jesus. Come on tonight, take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me. Amen. I'll take Jesus every time. Come on now. And I'll take Jesus. You take Jesus tonight. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me than the world. Have not sing that chorus again just a second. So I'm still praying. Maybe praying for you. I don't know. You gonna let God speak to you? Are you gonna walk out of here tonight like that boy did I was talking about a while ago? I'll come back in two weeks. You don't know that. You don't know you'll be here Sunday, this Sunday. Don't worry about what's waiting at home. Don't worry about, don't worry about uh, bills or relationships or some kind of family trouble or something like that. Don't worry about that. The main thing in the world tonight you getting right with God. Then all that other stuff will work out. Get it right with God. I don't care if you're half drunk, if you're shacking up. What? Give it to God, right? Just like you are. You come to the Lord like you are. And let Him straighten it out. I'm gonna have to sing one more verse tonight. A lot of people's been up here getting right with God. Maybe you need to come too. Maybe you raised your hand. This is your chance right now. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't worry about if you can live it or not. You can't, I can't. You, you let the Lord worry about that. You just give it all to Him tonight. You give it all to Him. Ain't no doubt in my mind, some of you is holding back. Christians are praying. Ain't no doubt, somebody's holding back. You say, I know I need to, I know I need to. You raise your hand a minute ago. But the devil's trying to get you not to come. Why don't you come tonight? They're gonna sing one more chorus. Will you let God speak to you tonight? Will you let him? Go ahead, girls. Amen. Amen. And I'll take come on, come on, come on, right now. Come on, right now. Right now. I'll Amen. I'll take Jesus. Amen. Come I'll on. I'll take Jesus every time. time. Come on, come on tonight. Come he on, girls. Come on. Come on. Holy Ghost, take into your heart. Than the world you see, Amen. There's, There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus. One more time. Every time. One more time. This is your time. Come on, right now. Come on. I'll take Jesus. Come on tonight. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. You come right now. Come on. Get out of your seat. Come. Make that step tonight. 
step out there tonight. Every time he means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my yeah, mind. I'll take Jesus every time. She's playing softly. Let's just bow our heads one more time just for about 30 seconds. I still feel in my heart somebody else needs to come. Brother Danny, I know I need to, but I'm scared. You come on. Just come on. Slip out of your seat right now. Christians are praying. Christians are praying. We'll not, we'll not tarry long. We're not going to come to you. Ain't nobody going to try to drag you to the altar. That's between you and the Lord. You come tonight. Would you, girls? Young man? You lifted your hands and I need prayer. You come. Come on, right now. Now's your chance. Now's your chance, right now. Go home tonight with this thing fixed. Go home tonight and lay down and sleep with a good heart and a clear conscience. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Make a new start right here tonight. Come on. Come on. Slide right out of your seat and come. We'll wait about 15 seconds. This is your chance, ma'am. This is your chance. Will you come? This is your chance. Right now. This is your chance. Right now. You come right now. Christians pray. Christians pray. God's getting a hold of somebody's heart. You come right now. Come right now. I don't usually extend the invitation like this, but somebody needs to make that move here tonight. You come right now. Take Jesus. Come on. Come on. It's your chance. Chance right now. It's your chance right now. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, preacher. Amen. Well, it don't get any plainer than that. Amen. 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 I tell you what, I wish I could force people to get saved. Amen. Amen. I'd make sure everybody in here was saved and born again. But that is a decision that you have to make. I know Brother Danny's heart was burdened, boy. He, he'd love to just come grab you yeah. and say, come on down here and get your heart right. But you got to do it because you choose to do it. Not because the pre preacher can't choose it for you. Right. Amen. Amen. So as you leave here tonight, I w if you're lost and undone, I wouldn't leave here with that bothering me. Amen. I'd, right. I'd, you get me, you get Brother Danny, you get one of these preachers, one of these ladies, ladies, and, and, and get down here around this altar, and we can explain salvation to you. And you can get born again tonight. Amen. Amen. I pray if, you, if you're lost and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, that you won't get any rest. Amen. God will bother you. You'll have mental problems. You'll have social problems. God will churn in you until you decide, I'm giving up. And I want to be born again. I want peace in my life. Amen. I'd rather see you saved than anything. Amen. 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 I'd rather see you saved and at the bottom of the barrel, if that's the way you want to look at it, and going to heaven than to have everything in this world and die and go to hell. Amen. Amen. You're going to wish that too one day. Amen. So I appreciate Brother Danny coming. Amen. Appreciate his people coming all this way, being with us tonight. Amen. Appreciate all our preacher friends and all the different churches that are represented here. Amen. Been a lot of prayer put into this week, a lot of work, a lot of energy, a lot of money put into this week. And I just appreciate the Lord and appreciate God's people. Amen. So we're going to dismiss in prayer uh, and we're going to eat. Please, uh, Southridge knows this, please let our elders and our visitors eat. Y'all kids, I'm coming to the fellowship hall. <laughs>